whole scene of reality TV star has a whole lot of like, okay. Pretty good. Show you one more. 2015 saw your long awaited return to solo design in the form of luxury lifestyle brand Lathbridge. How does it feel to be back in fashion full swing? Um, I'm glad you said long awaited because I didn't know if anyone knew I'd gone or or if anyone was waiting or anything. Um, it's great. It's 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 very weird to have kind of something that you love mm. taken away from you. Essentially, um, it was a conscious decision. I left Patrick Cox, but you know you have a non compete and you're allowed to do something which is all you've ever done. Mm. So to be able to be my own boss again um, is very, very, very exciting. Where would you position uh, this collection compared to the other collections on you know, the wider canon of your work? Well, I mean, I am my own muse. Um, I am size eight, which is the sample size. So all those shoes that you see over there, you saw in the house, they're all my size. Uh, I try on everything. And it's really as simple as like, would I wear it? It's in the collection. Would I not wear it? It's not in the collection. I'm not thinking, does a 25 year old Japanese super trendy boy want this shoe? Or does an American ad executive want that shoe? I'm, I'm, we're not doing that. No. Or we, I'm not doing that. It's just purely doing it for myself. How would you say London Fashion Week compares to other fashion capitals that you've worked within? Well, it's a tough one. Um, if every British designer came back, London Fashion Week, men's and women's would be the best fashion week in the world. But because of the commercial realities of Italian factories and this and that and the French mega groups like Louis Vuitton, the Caring Group and whatever, uh, Lo and Pino, it's kind of moved and it's it's kind of like trying to bring back the coal industry. It's not ever really going to be. It's They're doing a great job. I mean, LCM is doing a great thing considering it didn't even exist a few years ago, which was sad because, you know, like I said, Britain is the home of Taylor and it's the home of menswear. So... It's just about getting the buyers to add something else on their schedule. And they're all so overworked. Um, fashion has become so ridiculous with collection, pre-collection, runway, mm. blah, blah, blah. You know, it's six seasons a year minimum now. And they're always traveling. And they always have to Instagram 10 times a day. And yeah. just all this pressure. I mean, you've probably heard the speech that Albert Albaz made kind of when he retired, basically. And Raf Simmons complaining about the system and everything. So, um it's a it's it's a window to the world. Mm. Uh, it shows the creative side, um, and then the designers will get picked up and hired for a big Italian company. I mean, that tends to be what's happening yeah. with them. You know, a lot. Of, there are a few that have managed to have careers, which is great, like Erdem or um, you know Christopher Kane or things like that. On the women's side, um, in the men's side, I, I love what E Tots is doing. I love what Patrick does. Um, you know, I've, I used to do the shoe for Richard James since the '80s. So there are some British designers, but. It, it's small. I mean, it wouldn't add up to DKNY, you right. know, sort of thing, all of British Fashion Week together. So it's important and it's got a lot of freedom and it's creative, but it still, for some reason, maybe because of the lack of, you know, um, manufacturing here, doesn't reach the big numbers. What is it about Britain as opposed to maybe other nations that inspires you to create your shoes? Well, I'm, I'm Canadian. I've been here 32 years. My, my father's British. My father's from the East End of London. I was raised kind of all over the world. We lived all over Africa as a kid, Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad. Um, I, um, I think there's three elements to my designs. I think they're, the design element is definitely very British. You know, I've been here so long. It's the, the old empire coming back. I love going to all the flea markets and seeing things. It's the most international place in the world. You never get swallowed by the whole, but there is such an incredible sense of history and tailoring in menswear, especially more than women's wear. There is the, the idea of the British peacock, the gent, the dandy, all those sort of things. And then you just go through the, the tribes of music from punks to mods to rockers and everything. To me, I think if you think of fashion in England, you think of a man. If you think of Paris or, Eng or let's say France and fashion, you think of a woman. It's really weird how some countries represent a sex more than the other, but I think in England it is all about celebrating the male peacock. So it's very inspirational for me to just be here and live here and just, there's just so much freedom here. Then there's being in Italy, so there's the element of craft, which is extremely important. So I think there's a, a, th a second element in my life is my working in the factories and learning how to sew two pieces of leather together or do something like that. And then I think I just, maybe the Canadian side of me, there's like a practicality. Um, you know, yes, I have done theatrical shoes, but 
we are not trying to dress Lady Gaga. You know, it's, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It's a little bit more reality based. Um, I'm not going to say something naff like we're dressing the mature gentleman, but you know, there's nothing wrong with being 52. I'm 52. Um, 50s, the, what is it? 50s nifty or something like that. So, uh, you know, cool. yes, I, you know, obviously want to get some cool 25 year old guys wearing the stuff too, but I think probably market, my market is probably going to be 30 to 50. Yeah. I would say. What challenges and opportunities as a designer, you know, in the fashion industry today, would you say you face compared to 20 plus years ago? Because you launched your, your brand Wannabe back in 1994. Yeah. Um, so how do you compare designing today compared to 1994? It's a whole other world. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <Yeah. laughs> uh, and that sounds ridiculous because it's not like I wasn't designing. I was doing Geox in the meantime. Um, and I only left Patrick Cox in 2007. But it's like, who are these people? Mm. Where, where, did everyone, where did everyone go? <laughs> um, it's, you know, the whole social media, the whole obsession with fame, yeah. you know, the, I mean, it was already started before, but the rise of the stylist, you know, when, when I was super mega successful and all that sort of thing back in the day, you know, people bought shoes. <laughs> they came into my store, they were famous, they chose them themselves, they bought them, they paid for them, they left. You know, now the stylist goes, gets them, or they don't even, the stylist gets them, they're sent for free, and then they're not even sent for free, they're paid to wear the stuff if it gets to that sort of extreme level. So all of that is new. Um, the constant obsession with Instagram and putting out another image, putting out another image, putting out another and image. And do, do you personally embrace and engage in social media? Uh, yeah, it's... it's it's fun, but I can see it becoming obsessive, you know, and, and Albert Albert said something. He said, you know, at a fashion show, people used to stand up and applaud. He goes, they can't now because they've got their hands busy holding phones. And he goes, they can't <laughs> applaud. You know, they're like, and they all want to get that last shot of the runway sort of yeah. thing. So there's a just, it's almost like they're not there. Now, what are your hopes for 2016 for Lathbridge? Um... You know, I'm not doing any five-year plans. I'm not making any crazy, crazy predictions or anything like that. I have no world domination plans. Like I used to get a little bit megalomaniac back in the old wannabe days. I just want to really do something I really like. Um, if I could make the shoes in England and not go to Italy, then my life would be complete. If I could get on a train with my dogs, go to a factory, spend a couple of days, come back, walk to work, you know, to have my store, you know, that would just be wonderful. It, that's not going to happen. Um, but if I just need to figure out how to do what I do and still be organic and not just have a career because I've had a great life and I had a great career but for 20 years there I was nearly Monday to Friday and I'm not willing to make that sacrifice again there has to be a, there has to be a balance there has to be time for them there has to be time for a personal life there just has to be something else besides just working um, and just doing something you're proud of 